don't know we're watching them, but there are surprises in store tonight for Bob Pilling, who is about to meet again the little boy whose life he saved, four would-be impressionists who'll find out what it's like to be done yourself, and Sandy Tatnell, who's about to meet the brother he thought he'd lost forever. For these people, and more, it's surprise, surprise! Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Scylla Black. Good evening and welcome to the first of our new series of Surprise Surprise. Well, here we are, almost three weeks into 1986. I wonder how many of you have still kept your, your New Year resolutions. Come on, own up. How many of you have kept your New Year's resolutions? <laughs> <laughs> Not many. Oh, you are awful. But I like you. <laughs> Do you want to know what my New Year's resolution was? It was to be on time, to be punctual. And what happened? I got to the studio this morning and the, the producer went berserk. He went raving mad. He said, what about your New Year's resolution? He said. I said, well, I'll go to the foot of our stairs. What are you shouting at me for? <laughs> he says, you are an hour late. I said, oh, no. I said, I'm early. I'm usually two hours late. <laughs> enough of my problems because it's time for our first surprise and it's for somebody in our audience tonight now we've got a party of ambulance men all the way down from Blackpool in our audience tonight where are you lads yeah. oh and there are the fellas over there oh look at that now we arranged for you especially to come down here on a social trip didn't we yes, yes but one of you doesn't realize that we fixed it all just to get him here does he no. <laughs> yeah. And that very person is Bob Pilling. Where are you, Bob? <laughs> He's the one that's nearly fainting up there. <laughs> Come on, stand up. Let's have a look at you, Bob. Oh. two lovely people that I want you to meet so if you'd like to come and down and join us I'd be very happy about that come on Bob Bob, these are the people I'd like you to meet. And this is Anne, and this is Mike Wedgbury. Now, I know you haven't a clue, by the way, you're looking at me. <laughs> you haven't a clue who these people are, but I'll tell you one thing. These people will never, ever forget you. And I think we, we better let you, Mike, tell the story. What exactly happened ten years ago? One Sunday afternoon, Anne was changing the baby on the mat on the floor, and... After eating a meal, the baby brought back the food and she said, Mike, help. Uh, I looked at the baby and I could see that the baby was in distress. I immediately ran to the phone, dialed 999, asked for the ambulance, said to come quickly. There was a baby with breathing difficulties. I went back up the stairs and Anne was there with the baby and she handed him to me. I ran down the stairs and it was like seconds that the ambulance crew were there and we went into the ambulance and as soon as we were sort of mobile, um, they got the resuscitator and revived uh, the baby, and uh, I'll never forget him. Oh, Bob, and, and you revived that little baby. That little baby was a boy of three weeks old. His name was Edward. Yes, I remember that. And uh, they've always wanted to meet you and thank you for this, because they, since then they've moved away from Blackpool and they couldn't trace you, but we trace you down, and I think, Anne, you want to say a special thank you, don't you? Yes, it was 1979 when we left Blackpool. And it's been one of my ambitions to try and find you, to let you know that over the ten years you've never, ever been forgotten. And uh, there's somebody else we'd like you to meet, Bob. It's that very little boy. 
He's 10 years old. In fact, he's celebrating his birthday today. And he wants to share it with you, Bob. Come in, Edward. Where are you, love? What do you think of your handiwork? Look at him. Isn't he, isn't he a bonny boy? He is. He's, beautiful. he's got lovely red hair, just like Prince Harry. <laughs> <laughs> and our Jack. <laughs> and it's his 10th birthday, and I know you want to ask him something special, don't you, Edward? Yeah. What's that? To blow the candles out with me. Oh. Would you help him blow the candles out? Well, if you lift the cable, cake up, Edward, I'm sure he will. After the count of three, give it the biggest puff you've got. One, two, three. Well, while you're about to tuck into that cake, I'm going to tell you about our Bob. It's our Bob Carroll Juice, and has he had a busy week? He's been to Gloucestershire because we got a letter from Leslie Acton, who's a barmaid in a pub there. All the time she's been pulling pints and polishing glasses, she's had this secret dream that just for once, that she could serve somebody really famous. So we thought, well, Bob Carroll, Jesus, famous. And he's always had this ambition too. He's always wanted to surprise a barmaid in a pub. Is it exciting? Here we go. Leslie Acton, hello, lovely to see you. Oh, Leslie, hi. you wrote to us. <laughs> you wrote to us saying that you would love to serve some famous people rather than just oh the local people around God. here. Well, surprise, surprise, lady. We've got lots and lots of people lined up for you to serve. All famous faces and lots of lovely people for you to see. So get your coat. We're going now. Where's your coat? Come on, off with me. Come on, Leslie. Surprise, surprise. Here we go. Oh, my. <laughs> brought Leslie up to London, in fact, to the Grosvenor House Hotel in the heart of Mayfair, no less. Very posh. And it was the night of a big annual gala dinner of the star-studded show business organisation called the Granddaughter of the Water Rats. So let's see how many stars you can spot. Well, here we are, all in our best frocks. We've brought Leslie to the Grosvenor House Hotel in London for a very special evening, um, the Water Rats Annual Ball. And first of all, Leslie, I've got somebody rather special to introduce you to. It's the immediate past King Rat, Mr. Davy Kay. Welcome, David. This is Leslie. Hello, Hello. Leslie. How are Gloucester. you? Fine, thank you. What a beautiful girl. Is it? <laughs> what sort of people, Davy, is Leslie going to be able to serve drinks to tonight? Uh, Michael Caine, uh, Ruth Maddock, Sue Pollard, Lovely. Michael Crawford, to name just a few. All right, I'll see you later on, eh? Okay. Bye for Thanks now. Thanks so much, Davy. We'll fill Bye. up the champagne glasses. And you'll see us in action. All right. Yes. Got me excited. I'm just that natural. This is Are you Don't you let that mean dog spit at me, I'll kill you. Thank you. Really well. Could I introduce you to Leslie? This is uh, our wonderful waitress oh, from Hi, Leslie. Uh, nice to meet you. She wants to serve famous people with champagne. Okay. One of the most famous in the world. It's a pretty face. Thank you. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you very much. Isn't she lovely? Yes, she is. Leslie, hello. Uh, hello. Uh, glass of champagne. I, I, yeah, I don't drink, so I uh, can't drink share. But do you have any Perrier or anything like that? Uh, we will organise a Perrier for you. Super. Jean, a nice glass of champagne. I'll see your glass is empty. Can we refill it? Thank you. Thank you very much, Bob. Thank you. Do you think uh, she'd make a good job in the road return? At oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Mind you, a little bit posh for the road return. You think Beck would object? I think so, yes. That's my competition. Who is it? Christian Barnard. Christian Barnard, she knows you. <laughs> He's come 6,000 miles especially to be with us tonight. And you are the first lady that served him tonight. Oh! <laughs> 
We've spilled all the drinks all over the floor. Isn't this exciting? Well, surprise, surprise, the carpet. But there you are. We live and learn. Somebody nudged the old tray, and away they all went. We'll start again. <laughs> Lovely. What I say now, you can see why he's an entertainer, not a surgeon, you see. <laughs> Hello. You're not going to spill it all over me. <laughs> Hello, Leslie. Hello, Ruth. Have you met lots of famous people then? So far, yes. Great. Day, yeah. Good. Well, I hope you have a nice evening. Okay. Usually it's a wonderful evening, the Water Rats Ball. What are you looking like that for? You don't know who I it is. I think she's smashing. Who is it? Who is Michael it? Michael Caine. Michael Caine, of course it's Michael Caine. Surprise, surprise. surprise. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you. Cheers. You've got through about uh, eight bottles of champagne. Apart from what went over the floor. <laughs> Congratulations. I think you did it brilliantly. She didn't panic at all. With all these famous people, I did, but Leslie didn't. Thank you. Well done, Leslie, and I know you literally had a smashing time. <laughs> you know, we've all had lots of viewers doing different things on Surprise Surprise. Have you been watching the show, everybody? Yes. Well, if you've been watching the show, you must know that we've had a tap dancer on here, we've had dancers, pop singers, crooners, even a little girl comedian. But we haven't yet had a single impressionist. Until this week, when we found a volunteer. Come on, sweetheart, wherever you are, stand up. Where's our impressionist for this evening? Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, I know you're looking a little bit confused, but don't worry about a thing. I mean, you all wrote into us, all four of you, saying that you'd love to come on the telly and do a turn. And we just couldn't choose between one of you, so we thought we'd have all four of you here. So if you'd like to come and join us down here on the set, I'd be pleased to have you. Hello. Like to meet you, Joe. Oh, <laughs> who's that supposed to be? <laughs> Donald Duck. <laughs> who's that supposed to be? Bobby Ball. Bernie Winters. Oh, Bernie Winters. <laughs> <laughs> he will be pleased. I'll tell him. <laughs> well, I don't know any of your names because uh, you know I've forgotten when you sent the letters in. So let's start off with ladies first. Um, you on the end. Tracy. What's your name? Tracy. Tracy, where do you come from, Tracy? I'm Croydon in Surrey. Oh, you do? And what are you going to do for us tonight? Who are you going to... Uh, a bit of David Bellamy, Sue Pollard. Are you really? I've Actually, <laughs> it's very interesting. I'd like to see if a girl do a, a fella like David Bellamy. Would you like to do a bit of David for us tonight? Okay. <laughs> well, in your own time, chuck off you go, to stand Tracy. Up for... You can... Do you, I mean, do you do everything standing up? <laughs> <laughs> Love, you can. Okay, yes. then, have to do the thing. Oh, you've got to do. Oh, I mean, you know, just camera, please, just follow her anyway. <laughs> yeah. It's wonderful to be here with you all this evening. Now, when you wake up in the morning, don't say good morning to your neighbour, say good morning to your plants with specimens. <laughs> now, when you look around you, you don't seem to really appreciate all your plants, or we seem to neglect them all in the way sometimes we can't seem to you were the first on Tracy. Oh, that was absolutely okay. smashing. Gosh, I'm dreading this. <laughs> <laughs> Please introduce yourself and you tell me your name. My name is Graham Allen. I'm Hi, Graham. Where are you from? Umberside. Umberside? Umberside. Oh, isn't that lovely? Who are you going to do for us tonight? Um, Apart from Bernie Winters. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to do Frank Spencer oh. and uh, Benny Hill. I quite fancy... Frank Spencer, I haven't seen him done for a while. I quite fancy Benny Hill. <laughs> <laughs> oh, which one? Who do you do better, Benny Hill or Frank Spencer? I've done both good. <laughs> Why don't you do a little medley yet, then, Graham? Shall I do a little bit of each? Yes, come on, big <laughs> Do you need to stand up too? I certainly do. You do? Okay. Well, there's your camera there. It's mine, but you can have it for the time being. <laughs> Nobody wants to see your bum. There's the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my name is Frank Debonair Sex Symbol Spencer. <laughs> and I've had a lot of trouble, as you can see. I, I went to the doctors the other day, and I, I said to the doctor, I'm not feeling too well. 
The doctor said, have you flu? I said, no, I've come on the bus. <laughs> Oh, that's lovely. Now can you do Frank Spencer? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, give us a touch of Benny, 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 Benny. I'll lock the long. Well done. You kept interrupting me, didn't you? Oh, sorry, <laughs> Bonds. And I must tell you before, you know, the show's over, I mean, nobody could see it at home, but your shirt tail is hanging out. You try. <laughs> From Blackburn, oh, another northern lassie there. <laughs> Who are you going to do for us tonight? Um, Michael Spencer, uh, Michael Crawford, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Bobby Ball. Oh, Bob, he's done. He's done the Spencer guy. Can we have a little bit of Bobby, please? Well, I'm very nervous. You know? Oh, you don't worry about. We're all friends, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. Go on, rock on. <laughs> rock on, Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> you, you stupid woman, will you stop? <laughs> Mike Grace out for it. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, very good. I'm, she wasn't expecting that, was <laughs> What about you? Last but not least, this little gnome over here. Sorry, are you speaking to me? <laughs> I'm looking at you. Well, just about. <laughs> What's your name? Steve Butler. Steve, where are you from, love? From the forest of the <laughs> What was that then? <laughs> <laughs> Who made a sound? Was it you? I didn't. <laughs> I would have done, and I could have done, but Ooh, I I've always wanted to kill that duck. <laughs> <laughs> now, this duck, not you all, but I love you all. <laughs> all right, look, who are you going to do for us tonight? Max Boygraves, Robin Day. Oh, Max, oh, I, I can't sing. Who are you going to do Robin Day? Robin Day? <laughs> Please do Robin Day, come on. Singing a Max Fire Grape song. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to Question Time. <laughs> I shall be asking the Prime Minister some very straightforward political questions and I shall expect some straightforward answers. And if not, I'm going to be persistently rude. <laughs> Now, just before the show started tonight, I asked everybody in the audience if they wanted a drink. And, you know, they weren't very happy. So I didn't <laughs> they know they wanted... They weren't very happy. Yeah. <laughs> Does Max speak like that? They yeah. weren't very happy. They weren't very happy. Somerset. <laughs> <laughs> Don't. I'm trying to make you feel it yeah. in your own time. Off you go. I bought everybody in the audience a drink and I weren't very happy. <laughs> happy. <laughs> see your little bum at the back here. <laughs> no, no. How would Max say, hello, I want to tell you a story? Do it for me, just now I can see you. Hello, I want to tell you a story. Oh, that's Max. Nice. 
Well, you weren't very happy. <laughs> I think you've all been terrific sports tonight, and you know, really, you're better than half the acts on television. You really are. We know that. <laughs> Don't look straight into my eyes when you say that, Jane. <laughs> but there's one more impression we'd like you to do. We want you all to do an impression of that very famous Cockney, Jimmy Greaves. But as the audience will agree with me, I'm sure that they look nothing like Jimmy Greaves, do they? <laughs> and I think you should all get dressed up and really look the part. And I don't mind without the dressing up. No, because we want you all to look the same and we want to give everybody a fair chance because we're going to pick the bestest and later then I, on. And then I'll do that as well. Pop. <laughs> well, don't argue. This is my show. <laughs> <laughs> I want to do it now. Well, you will do it your way when you're dressed up like Jimmy Creeps. <laughs> Is you've got, you, I mean, look at these beautiful girls sitting on either side of you, gentlemen. They look nothing like Jimmy Greaves, Man. and I think it's only fair that they should go up. <laughs> they should go up. Oh, isn't he flash? <laughs> God, I wish I had you on blind date. <laughs> I think it's only fair that oh, the girls should have a third chance <laughs> and get dressed up and look even a little like Jimmy Greaves. So would you like to go off now and get changed and a little bit more makeup on? And we'll see you later on the show. Will you do that just for me? Go on then. All right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the impressionists. <laughs> In the meantime... <laughs> I'm going to make a big impression on a cup of tea. I'll see you in a couple of minutes. See you then. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back. Now, every week, our Bob will be out and about with our outside broadcast cameras to spring a surprise on somebody. And at this very moment, he's at a do-it-yourself shop in North London, ready to bring us a rather special dance performance. Now, before we go over there, let's have a look at what happened earlier today when Bob first arrived at the shop to surprise Pamela Clegg, who works there. Have a look at this. Right, it's right round this corner of the shop, the DIY shop. If I had a hammer, I don't want a hammer, it's a hammer one. I've got my hit hat on. So I think we've cracked it. Got to find the way in. <laughs> Excuse me, lads. <laughs> this is it. Pamela, Pamela Clegg, surprise, surprise. How are you, Pamela, I believe? Which is Beryl? Beryl. You're Beryl? Yeah. Now then, you wrote a surprise, surprise, because you have a little ambition, don't you, Pamela? Is that right? Are you not talking to us? No. <laughs> You've got a little ambition, haven't you? You wrote in saying, your ambition is to dance to Singing in the Rain. Yeah. Is that right? And also, without you knowing, at the same time, Beryl rose in as well. Didn't you, Beryl? Yes. You didn't. <laughs> and we're here. So, you ready? I'm singing. <laughs> no rain. No, oh, there's no rain. Well, we just have to fix that for you, because we've arranged some rain for you, Pamela. And uh, we've arranged lots of things. A little costume for you, so you can do your impression of your favourite man, who is... Gene Kelly. Gene Kelly, you love him, yeah, don't you? Yeah, oh, I do. And you fancy yourself as? Well, anyone going? <laughs> Ginger Rogers? Ginger Rogers. Well, I, well, think, I, I think Ginger Rogers is the one for you. I used to have red hair. Did you? Oh, yes. Very red, didn't I? I don't you know if it'll make your hair red, but we can certainly make you dance to Singing in the Rain. Are you ready? You got your coat? We're going to do it right now, Pamela. Okay. Are you? Yes, we are. I'm singing in the rain. I know the feeling well, Pamela. I remember when I used to have red hair as well. <laughs> well, while they're getting ready for Pamela's big performance, first let me tell you about something special we've got for the first show in the new series. We're going to give you, at home, a chance to take part in the show tonight. We want you to ring in tonight if you can help us with some information. Now, to give you the details, ladies and gentlemen, straight from the Krypton Factor, we have Gordon Burns. Come on, Gordon. Thank you. 
Well, Gordon, welcome to Surprise Surprise. Nice to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, you're very welcome. I'm, I'm sure this is all going to be a big change for you. I mean, from the Krypton factor. Well, just a bit, perhaps, but I think probably more fun. Just a bit? We're all thick here. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're not. I'm you... sure you would do beautifully on our assault course. <laughs> of you were there to guide me. Talking about assault courses, have you ever been on that assault course? Well, yes. Um, I had to do it. I was forced, almost at gunpoint, uh, to do it because they said, you can't keep asking your contestants to run down this horrendous assault course every week if you haven't done it once. So I have done it from beginning to end, every obstacle. I'm not saying any more than that, except that I am <laughs> never, ever, ever doing it again. <laughs> What a shame. Well, I hope you don't say the same thing about surprise, surprise, because we've got a little work for you to do tonight. In fact, you've got a lot of details for us, haven't you? I have indeed. Well, fire away, Gordon. We can't wait. Oh, fire away. Thank you. Well, Surprise Surprise has had thousands of letters from people wanting to find friends and family that they've lost touch with over the years. Tonight, we've set up a special phone line to try and help just some of them. First of all, take a look at this photograph, particularly the Navy Petty Officer on the right, his surname is Lee. His nickname was Tansy, among the other men, in 845 Helicopter Squadron in the late 50s, when this photograph was taken. It was sent to us by ex-petty officer Bill Bartlett of Surrey, who would dearly like to get in touch with his old shipmate. They both go back to the pioneering days of helicopter flying in this country. So, Tansy Lee, if you're watching, give us a ring on 01 9090 and while you're at it, explain how you came to be known as... A tansy. <laughs> well, now a plea from Mrs. Rima Ball. Her mother was a professional singer called Dorothy Dorsey, who made a number of classical records, those old 78s that break easily. Now, Rima says it broke her heart when all the copies of the records that the family had were mistakenly thrown away, particularly because her children never heard their grandma sing. So, is there anywhere lying in an attic or in an enthusiast collection a record we could copy of anything by Dorothy Dorsey. Give us a ring if you've got one. It might patch up a row too because Rena isn't speaking to the so-called friend who threw the originals away. <laughs> now, back to someone who's much too young ever to have made a 78. Oh, you old swarvy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Gordon. See you later. Well, now let's see how we've brought the big Broadway musical back to the backyard of a do-it-yourself shop in Palmer's Green in North London. <laughs> well, here we are, Pamela. All ready for a lifetime's ambition to be fulfilled. But I gather it's not actually the first time you've danced to Singing in the Rain. No. I believe on Christmas Day, you went out in the back garden and did it. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Where was that? My daughter's house. And why? Well, if it's raining and I have an umbrella and dressed, I can't resist doing it. <laughs> really? Any puddle you see, you have to jump in it? Yeah. <laughs> OK, well, we've got most things. We all dress for it. I'm dressed for it because I'm your policeman. And we've got the yard all done out nicely. There's only one thing missing. It's actually the, the rain. We've got some snow that we didn't order a little bit. But uh, have a look at this for our rain. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the lads for the job, aren't they? But I really think, Pamela, that it could be uh, a little bit better if we had some professionalism. And we've actually arranged a couple of professional dancers for you to come and join you in your singing in the rain. So, uh, girls, are you ready? So, come and join us, girls. Now, uh, let me have a look at your faces, just for a moment. Oh, look. Oh, no! <laughs> What's the matter? Do, Pamela, do you know these people? They're my two daughters. Your two daughters. What are your names? What are your names? Veronica. Kathy. Veronica and Kathy, we've trained them to do the same. Have so, you? yes, I think it's about you three. <laughs> you, don't, sorry, you three girls showed us everything you got. So, more rain, please. Take your positions, girls.
dancing and singing in the rain. That was really wet <laughs> and wonderful. Now I'd like to tell you about the delivery of my very first Sillagram in this brand new series. Now you know that Sillagrams go to people whose friends or family have told us that they've done something rather special. Well, we got a whole sack full of mail about Queenie Brown. Now, she's just retired after more than 52 years in the Girl Guides. So I set off to surprise her, clutching me woggle. <laughs> <laughs> I do love surprises, don't you? And is she going to get a surprise today? <laughs> Meanwhile, out of sight over the fence are some of Queenie's old guide friends. We invited them along to help out with our surprise telegram. Queenie! Surprise, surprise! It is surprise, definitely. Isn't it wonderful? <laughs> oh, my goodness me. The little bird wrote and told me that you deserved a special syllogram. I don't really, no. Of course you do. No, I don't. I've enjoyed every, every minute of it, actually. Well, I've got a lot of your friends here with me today to help me deliver that special syllogram. Where are you, girls? Gracious me, oh, this is terrible. I'll get you. I'll get you. Oh, Queenie, what are we waiting for? I Let's go camping. Come on, girl. <laughs> Memories and melodies of songs I used to know. Friends of mine that harmonize together. <laughs> Scallywags and sleeping bags and tent flaps all askew. Breathing in the open air together. Together. are in the audience tonight. <laughs> yes, they are. Well done, girls. Mind you, I'll never be able to look a baked bean in the face again. <laughs> Maybe after the break, though, I will. See you in a couple of minutes. Hello and welcome. 
welcome back. Well, I think it's about time we found out how our impressionists are getting on, don't you? Yes, yes indeed. Where are you, impressionists? Sit down, sit yourself down. Yeah, My goodness. Oh, ah, oh, ah. Give us your match by, <laughs> We want you to meet now the other half of that special duo to help you with your impression of Greavesy. And that is, of course, Ian St. John. <laughs> yes. What's well, your honest opinion, Ian? What do you think of these Greaves? My immediate okay? opinion, obviously, they're all better looking than Jimmy Greaves. Aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> she's got better legs. <laughs> yeah, oh, they look, they're looking terrific, yeah. Yes, but we haven't seen them. I mean, you look very good with your hats on, but I mean, we haven't seen you with your hats off. Oh, look at this. <laughs> Quickly put his hat. Yeah, put your hat on. You look better with your hat on. But they look good, don't they? Yeah, terrific. Yeah. I mean, now what they're going to do? They're going to do the, the Jimmy Greaves. They are going to do a Jimmy Greaves uh, impression. But we need a little help from you, Ian, because uh, would you do us a favour? Could you chat them up, just as you chat them up on your lovely TV show on a Saturday? Okay, lovely. Right. Well, hello and welcome to this special edition of the Saint and Greavesy and Greavesy. And Greavesy. <laughs> now, Jim, uh, have you had a good week? Yeah, yeah all, all right, same. same. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have you one at a time, please? Could I ask uh, Greavesy at the end there, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, what have you been up to? Well, saying I did get a call from Brian Clovey, not in a yeah, yeah. I knew it was coffee. He transferred the charges, yeah. <laughs> That's not bad, yes. yeah. No. Oh, well, watch it, it, out for this one. <laughs> Flash out. <Yeah. laughs> is he? Uh, is he looking forward to the big game? Come off it, saying he don't approve, mate. Says he never go on in with Jack Charlton. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't. <laughs> now, I don't mean that big game, Greaves. I mean England against Scotland now. I mean, I fancy Scotland, you know. What did Cluffy say about that? Yeah, like me, he's worried about the England strikers. He saw one shooting to the nail last week and miss, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's from Blackburn. <laughs> he caught... Know. Yeah, yeah, he caught one yeah. shooting in mid-air last week. <laughs> in mid-air last week. <laughs> right. <laughs> Greavesy number four. Well, I think England will have trouble getting past the Scottish goalkeeper. What do you think? Leave it out, say. I'm the one who makes the jokes. The Scottish goalie. That's what I call Cinderella. He always misses a ball. <laughs> that was That was absolutely Hold it, hold it. I'm the one who makes all the jokes about the Scottish goalie. Job. <laughs> <laughs> to me, that Scottish goalkeeper. Jimmy, come on, Do you know sit down. About football? Not a thing. You can get a job on our show anytime. <laughs> 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 oh, thank you. Now, you two haven't seen each other today, have you? Uh, yes, we have actually. Have to you tell worked? The truth, yeah. Well, Just well, up in the office, <laughs> around the back. Where's much. the office? It's nice to be on a big budget show, this. <laughs> I mean, on our set, you sneeze and it all falls down. <laughs> Oh, so yes. Oh, what did you think of your stand-ins? I mean, have you ever, ever been done by two girls before? This is a family <laughs> program. Oh, it? It, it was in there. It just popped out. Well, it, was, uh, it was definitely a surprise, surprise. <laughs> no, did you know, Jimmy, that uh, Ian holds the record? for scoring the fastest goals, a hat-trick, hat -trick. in the shortest time. Did you know that? Yes. Did yes, you? I did, yeah. Tell me how long it was then. Something like two and a half minutes, wasn't it? Actually.
actually it was two minutes 20 seconds and yeah. that record ladies and gentlemen has never ever been broken yeah isn't in, that marvelous in, in Scotland, is that? you were playing from the garage oh. and so, where you from what? Well, no not really I, i've been talking to someone who's been telling me about it <laughs> I've actually forgotten all about that, seriously. Well, it was, it was a long time ago. It was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A lot has happened since then. It was yeah. actually yeah. over 25 years ago. And you were so. playing for Motherwell. Yes, I was. And indeed, it was against Hibernian, is that the way you yeah. say it? Yeah, yeah. And um, yes. surprise, surprise, Ian. We've got the goalie oh, no. who let in those three goals <laughs> no. in two minutes, 20 seconds. It's Willie Wilson. Come in, Willie. Where are you? Come sit down. <laughs> now that is a surprise. Is, is it? Is it nice surprise? Had you had the gloves like that that day, you'd never lost any days. <laughs> now the stuff was a fluke. How you see him? There's going to be a fluke in uh, getting two and two and a half minutes. But yeah. Willie, I Who's know that? you and Ian have got a lot to talk about, and Jimmy, I know you'd like to get your would be st would be standings. I know you'd like to get to know the girls better, wouldn't you? Well, girls need a shave, that's for sure. <laughs> Already had the red shape. <laughs> to be honest, sir, they were that good. I mean, I could be out of a job. Yes. It's up to Saint now. Oh, but it's really nice to meet the real thing, isn't it, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. For coming down from Scotland, and indeed, thank you for our impressions. I did. I thought they did yeah. a marvelous job, don't you? Great. Yeah. Yeah. I've now got to make a very important phone call. See you in a minute. This time it's to Cardiff. Oh, I'm sorry, Willie, I touched your knees. <laughs> Mind you, I like it, I'll do it again. <laughs> Well, I've got a surprise now for three rather smashing ladies in South Wales. Now, they are early morning cleaners in a department store in Cardiff. And their workmates told us that they do a sort of singing sisters act. And I hope one of them, Marion Norris, is at home tonight because I'm going to give her a surprise phone call now. And I do hope she's in. Here's a number down here. Oh, my goodness me. Ten digits. Ah, oh, look at this. There's Mickey. Oh. Mickey Mouse! <laughs> yes! That reminds me, I must get half a pound of cheddar on the way home. <laughs> cruel, I'm cruel, I know. Right, here we go. Oh, two, two, two. Mm. Eight, four, oh, 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 three. That's it. Oh, there we go, it's ringing out. Fingers crossed, everybody. Hope Marion's in. Oh, please answer. <laughs> Hello? 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 Who's that? What do you mean, who's that? <laughs> Who am I speaking to, please? Marion. Pardon? Marion Norris. Hello, Marion. Surprise, surprise, it's Scylla here. Scylla? <laughs> Scylla, Scylla from Surprise, Surprise. Yes? <laughs> now, what's this all about? I'm calling about your gas bill. You haven't paid it. <laughs> no, Marion, I've got a little surprise for you. What's that? Well, I'll tell you, a little bird has told me that you and your friends, Sylvia and Mavis, have a singing act. Oh, come on, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I just told you that. Is that right or is that right or is it wrong? It is right, yeah. Now, where do you rehearse the singing act? <laughs> British home stores. <laughs> but whereabouts in the department store do you rehearse? In the ladies' toilet. <laughs> we were waiting for that. You didn't want to say that, did no. you? And we put a microphone in that lady's loo. Yes. And we recorded you. Oh dear God. <laughs> Marion Love, yes. have a listen to this. Oh, God. Sisters, sisters, <laughs> they were never such devoted sisters. sisters. <laughs> Many men are trying to stay the stuff, but no one can. They've changed the clip. Nobody can. <laughs> I thought that was absolutely...
absolutely wonderful. It was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Marion, will you come on the show next week and tell us all about it? <laughs> well, we want you. We thought you were ever so good. We thought you and Sylvia and Mavis should come on the show and sing that very song in the studio. Will you do that for us? I think yes. I think oh. yes for the other two. God bless you, Cotton Socks, Mary. Get in touch with the British Home Store and sort it out first. <laughs> <laughs> All right, love. See you next week. Don't forget to bring the girls with you. Ta ra okay, then. Bye. Ta ra. I can't wait for Mary and the girls to come to the studio. <laughs> I can't. I think Ma even just to know what she was saying. <laughs> I think it's time now we heard from Gordon again. Finally, a couple of quick ones. If these people recognise themselves, please give us a ring. Alfred Boswell, a barman in Bangor, North Wales, now thought to be living in the Blackpool area. And the little kid who fell into the Mill Lodge at Lomershire in Nelson, Lancashire, one icy Sunday morning 40 years ago. The boy who pulled him out is still trying to explain why he came home soaking wet. <laughs> For our researchers, All Dry will be on 01 834 9090 until 10 o'clock tonight. Now, don't worry if you haven't got through by then. You can still write to us at Surprise Surprise, London Weekend Television, London, SE 99. 9LT. Oh, well, that was absolutely smashing good. Now, have you enjoyed being on Surprise Surprise tonight? Very much. I've had a lot of fun and a lot of laughs. Well, certainly we've, we've enjoyed having you, haven't we, ladies and gentlemen? Ladies and gentlemen, Gordon Burns. Thank you. Well, now, I'm looking for two people in our audience tonight. It's Nessa and Sandy Tatnell from Kings Lynn. Where are you, Nessa and Sandy? Would you like to come and join us, please? Hello, Nessa. Have a seat. And don't you look smart? You look absolutely marvellous. Now, I know that you've been at London Weekend Television Studios all day, haven't you? Yes. Both of you. And, uh, well, it was regards to a documentary, wasn't it, Sandy? Yes. They were making a documentary about women w with unusual jobs. That's correct, yeah. Now, tell, her, tell us what Nessa does. She's actually a French polisher. A French polisher. Well, that's very unusual. It is indeed, isn't it? Yes. Well, you see, Sandy, we're not really interested in Nessa's French polishing. <laughs> In fact, there's no such documentary. <laughs> no, there isn't, Chuck. That was just all a ruse to get you down here in the right? studio. Because your Nessa is a wonderful woman. She wrote a letter all about you and told, told us the story of your life. Mm. Now, many years ago, you were in the Merchant Navy, is that right? That's correct, yes. Yes, and when you left the Merchant Navy, you decided to settle in New Zealand, is that right? That's correct. And you've got a brother, Jimmy, mm -hmm. your little brother, Jimmy. Yeah. And at that particular time, he was missing you like mad, and he thought he'd save up to join you and settle there with you in New Zealand. Now, round about that time, you got a letter from your family saying that your father was seriously ill. Yes, that's correct, yeah. And so you had to dash back home to be with your family. Mm -hmm. And at that particular time, Jimmy was on his way out to you. And literally, you and your brother Jimmy <coughs> were like ships in the night. You passed each other, didn't you? That's correct. And your Jimmy got to New Zealand mm -hmm. to find that his big brother, who he adored, had left to go home to Britain. And as it happened, your Jimmy couldn't afford to come back. And you, for the same reason, you couldn't afford to go back there. That's correct, yeah. <laughs> Now, you haven't seen your <coughs> baby brother Jimmy for over 30 years. That's correct, yeah. But, Sandy, you're going to see him tonight. Because we've flown him all the way over from New Zealand just to be with you. It's your baby brother, Jimmy. You haven't seen him in over 30 years. And here he is. Come in, Jimmy, lad. Where are you? Oh, Jimmy, 
come and sit down next to me. Just get, get yourself together. Well, what do you think, Sandy? How do you think your brother's changed over the years? So I think they look, look alike. <laughs> Nessa, you've not met me before. No. <laughs> well, it was all down to you, girl, I'm writing that letter you. and telling yes. us all about it. Yeah. But you know, ladies and gentlemen, and Nessa, you, you, you come from a very big family, don't you, Jimmy, lad? Yes, we do. And they're all scattered all over Great Britain, am yeah. I right, Sandy? Yeah. yeah. Not true tonight. We've got them all here for one big family reunion. And here they are. It's your brother, Fred, your George, Joyce, Joan, Ada, Gladys, and Marie. Wonderful. Have a sit no. down, make yourself comfortable. You sit there, Jimmy. <coughs> well, we think this is all a marvellous big family reunion. Are you happy, Jimmy? Yeah, terrific. Yes. What about you, Sandy? Well done, Jimmy. Haven't they got a marvellous family? The He said he didn't know we, we were going to get all of them here, but what a nice surprise, Jim. And sadly, we've come to the end of the show, but really, it's literally just the beginning for the Tatnell family. Enjoy him while you've got him. The world is changing, the more it stays the same. Life is full of small surprises, it's a never-ending game. If nothing is impossible, will you believe your eyes? If the unexpected brings a smile, that's a big surprise, surprise, Everybody, we really have come to the end of Surprise Surprise for tonight. And I'd like to thank everybody who's taken part in this very special show. Especially our Bob. And surprise, surprise, we'll be back next week at the same time, Sunday at 7.45.